then you've got something to do. So all, like a government agency, you, you can't create jobs. You create the opportunity for the private sector to make growth. So in this case, what we need to do is say, what could the private sector do better here through your intervention? Product, you, can product, you can package and, and move a product out of here easier than any of your competitors. You have to use that. Let me ask you this question because, I mean, this is a list of recommendations and all these type of things. Whatever. We don't have the manpower to, uh, in our regular day, to suddenly set aside and say, take me A to Z. What does your agency do in regards to something like that? What we do consult, what we call consultative marketing. What that means is that we will help you by writing technical marketing materials aimed at various industry addressments. Addressing. So let's say we want to go after a certain kind of industry. We will take the data that we have and say, here is a model facility that can be done in Ogdensburg. Here are the operational costs. Here are the anticipated revenues and profits for that industry. And this is why you should consider Ogdensburg for your next facility. That is the marketing piece. It's more than come live and play and work in Ogdensburg. It doesn't, you know, everybody's, there are 3,500 counties in this country doing the same thing. So the best thing to do is to say, here are the, by going to the market, the special marketer folks who, who know the industry better than I do, to say these are the these are the companies that you ought to think about approaching. But we'll produce the material for you. It says this is what you need to send them. So you need the marketing folks to know who to send it to. Because they know those companies in and out. And we can produce the materials to make that happen. And then you have to get them here to come look. So I, I want to help you produce the marketing material that you use. But I'm not going to say that I know all those companies intimately <coughs> that you ought to speak with, because that's a marketer's job. Yeah. Well, we will, I, I really thank you for everything you've done. I think this is... Uh, More than you wanted. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you what. It, it, uh, I didn't know what to expect. I really did not know what to expect. I don't think the board really thought you're going to get a packet like this, and how analytical it really is. Um, I mean, there's so many ways and so many things to look at this whole thing. <coughs> but I think we'll talk with John and Wade and the board here, whatever, to see exactly what we have in front of us and yeah. the steps and procedures. I mean, even the easiest recommendation, like say, to go to Cargo and say, listen, Cargo, you know, we're in the ag business or whatever. But, you know, we just don't know how to do it either. I mean, I and that's a big part of it. I mean, we have ideas, but, you know, take me to A to Z. Right. You know, and that's what we don't have the skills. I mean, that's some of the skills. We're not putting anybody down or like that, but that's some of the sure. things that, that well, take us there. And, you know, that's... Do you have, Sam, do you have champions that, let's say, we, we all go to work and say, you're going to handle cargo, and Wade's going to handle we, we health care. I, mean, well, I don't mean that yeah. they're going to do that. I just mean they're going to be the head of that committee. Well, that, that's one of the things that we have assigned one committee. We have, I've got a committee that I'm going to reorganize our, our board staff here or whatever, that, you know, those type of committees. That doesn't mean we can't ask outside people no. to, to be involved in this whole process also. Every one of those clusters and every one of those committees are 10 private sector folks that you go yeah. out to, would you, would you help us? So those are the manpower that you need. You need the people in the agricultural business to be on a committee. Well, I want people with passion. I mean, somebody yeah, has a passion. That's hard to this, find. It is. So somebody who's going to take it. I mean, there's a guy who's been doing this for seven, 18, 19, 20 years. But yeah. he has passion yeah. for this organization. You know, it's like, where do I find those other people that are going to be here 15, 10 years, whatever, to yeah. carry through this whole process? Because all you know, all it takes is one, one little snag, and it stops. Yeah. One snag, and it all stops. And yeah. so, I mean, that's a big part of this whole process. Well, we, don't, we don't like to leave reports that have no, no place to go. So well, I, I'm going to pre prepare some thoughts as a follow-up. Say, this is, I think, how you want to proceed to the next, next seven well, steps. Thank you. I think that would be very helpful. Very helpful. I know there's a lot to digest. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get out of your hair. Yeah. Get back to Any more questions for Bruce or comments? The only thing I can say, Bruce, is you've done a tremendous job. I've been here since 1992, and this is, this is where it's at. It's all in here. I don't know how you found it all, but you've done well, one, we did, we one did a lot tremendous of work. job. I'll tell you my problem. 
I don't, I don't know how to not do this. This is, I have one speed, and that is just do everything I know how to do. And, you know, I start, and I got a deadline, and every, it doesn't matter what happens in between. And I can point out a lot of areas in here that it's exactly where we've got to be. We just got to figure out a way, how to get Sam there. said, yeah. how to get there. Yeah. And I just, I can't say how much I'm happy with this report. Well, we, we want to pick directions that were achievable. Not pie in the sky, parachute industries, things that you'll never be able to do. These are these are <coughs> achievable things once the ball's put into motion, and you may need more than you got here. You do. That's why the, the St. Lawrence County Initiative. You may need some more help. You may oh, need. We do. Yeah. We do. I mean, I, I think we're blinded in a lot of ways. Some of these ideas <coughs> right in front of us, and you can't see them. I mean, that's well, that's uh, the nice thing about outside set eyes. That's what it does. And then the nice thing for me is to leave, which is a good thing too. I mean, get the consultant. Out. Okay, thanks, but now we have to do our own. Oh, thing. No, I, I think it's. Uh, Let's go from there, or whatever. Uh, we have, you know, ongoing business, daily business, yeah, and course. stuff like that. Yeah. So now we got to design design our organization yeah. to see exactly how this component works for the county, works for the yeah. city, works with everybody involved that can make something happen. And you need the public. You need the oh, public. absolutely. And because the they're gonna, districts do they're, they're going to eventually going to either be excited or kill uh, uh, the impetus. And then you have to say, okay, I'm going to let it die because I'm not going to get anywhere with it. I'd love to do it, but I can't do it. But one of the, the greatest things that you talked about today, and you touched on it a little bit, we're an authority. We're unique in our own way. We can go our own way. Yeah. And that's a very important thing for us to yeah. keep in mind. Yeah. We have our direction, we can do it. Yeah. And that's why the Port of New York, the Port of New Jersey, yeah. and those folks, yeah. they get things done. Yeah, it's true. It's right here. And it's an opportunity for us. Yeah. With the knowledge that you have. Very pleased, Mitch. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you. I'm working for you. Thank thank you. you. I, I hope that we can continue on for a long time. Okay. Thank you for exceeding our expectations. Yeah, who's the next time you're in town? I'll take you to McDonald's. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <it. laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be on the riverboat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm also going to have a cup of coffee. Anybody need a little five minute break or anything? Or real soon? Because my dogs have specialists in Ottawa, but well, he says I can't believe it. Because okay, um, where are we with this thing? In? So many ideas. Yeah, I'd be happy to tell you, just not. I can't. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's let's move to. Uh, folks, have a safe trip home. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we you received your package just recently. We have um, approval of board minutes held on uh, February fifteenth, March seventh, April fourth, and May seventh. <coughs> February and March are not ending. Which one do we have? Yeah, April and May. Which one's we approved in the uh, April? April and May. February and May? April and May. April and May. April May. That's what I'm saying. Okay. April and May. Yeah. Uh, we have a motion to accept those minutes? Approval minutes? I will make a motion to approve the April minutes. Okay. Motion approved. Second. Second. Second, Steve. Brown. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Um, wait, do we have any uh, other than the presentation? We have any other comments or presentations to uh, make? Uh, any citizens, no. anybody, board members? Yeah. Now let's get into our staff reports. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I recommend we move the Director of Operations report to the front uh, given those operational place? concerns. Okay. How's that, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like in a hurry, huh? <laughs> yeah. We're trying to uh, move one out and uh, move another one in this evening, so there's just a lot of uh, things that got to be done. I appreciate it. Thank you, Wade. Okay. Go ahead, Chief. Um, 
just a summary. Well, I'll tell you about the other things, and we'll get into really a lot of discussion about the port. On the industrial park, uh, we've uh, ordered all of our lighting, and we're going through uh, a program of uh, replacing, uh, in building three, replacing light fixtures, and uh, that's all through a program with NYSERDA, and it's uh, going pretty well, but uh, right now we're actually putting the lights up to work on that. Um, under the border station, that RFP has uh, already, we've already awarded that contract. That's uh, something I just left out on the report there. That's uh, everything was handled last month. Um, on the bridge, uh, the bridge maintenance crew is still is working on the Canadian side on the safety cable inspection. And uh, they've inspected the, the annually, they inspect the anchor piers and cable rooms. They're preparing for uh, this year, we get the biennial inspection. So they're out ahead on that. At the airport, um, we're preparing our vehicle spec uh, for the ARF truck, the fire truck replacement. <coughs> and, uh, that has got to, we're going to get that together by the middle of July. I believe that that's when the bid date for that will uh, go out. And uh, I've been told that uh, June 28th and 29th, the FAA will be in to do our annual uh, airport inspection. Uh, on general notes, with the port uh, ra rain, uh, rail car grain delivery of citrus pulp and cor corn gluten has uh, done really well, and uh, we did have uh, just before the windmill project, we had about two weeks of uh, spring road salt deliveries that are um, that some areas in uh, Franklin and Essex County um, took. Um, to update you on the Marble River project. Um, currently, uh, we've completed discharge of five vessels. You see the names right there. Um, we are unloading the BBC Hawaii, which is the second trip. The, the, it was here the first time. That is a, uh, that is a turbine uh, boat, and they are bringing in the uh, wind turbines and hubs and blades. Um, <coughs> the vessel that's coming, the Hawaii is scheduled to leave at 8 o'clock tonight, and the Campana is, I don't know anybody's been along the river, it's been sitting down in the Brockville uh, Anchorage for two days, and uh, that'll be coming in at 8 <coughs> o'clock right in that behind the that. Kinda yep, just kind of drifting out there, yeah, the pretty river. well lit at night, it's quite a sight. Um, that'll be coming in, and uh, w that is a tower vessel, and we'll be unloading towers there through the weekend, and then on I expect on Monday the Sloman Dispatcher. That's also a tower vessel. That'll be uh, that'll be another three or four days of unloading there. And after that, you see on there the Atlantic Board. I guess that has been moved to uh, the first of July, and then a week after that, I believe it's the BBC Ohio, which will complete uh, ten vessels. So uh, in the next three weeks, uh, pretty aggressive schedule, but um, we've been. Uh, uh, offloading those and uh, um, the storage has gone well and we're, we're just trying to keep up with the uh, loadout also. Um, let's see, pretty much all that, the notes in there just describe some of the things involved in that. Um, on the port access road, uh, we've been reviewing all the project submittals. Um, a good portion of them are, are in just a few that have to be completed, such as the fence and uh, our scale, scales and scale house um, are, uh, need to be tidied up there. Um, on the access road, there was a sanitary line that uh, went right underneath the project. That All that new piping has been put in <coughs> and uh, um, went really well. The railroad crossing has been installed and uh, basically the road sub-base material is uh, just about complete on that, and we're working on uh, ditching on the uh, road job. Um, and you see in the next 30 days, those um, things I've got to do really relate to some of the things I've told you about. That's about it. So your Steve. life is boring then, eh? Yeah, yeah. Steve, uh, before you can go, I just wanted to ask you one thing. Is I, I kind of made a comment to you and Wade the other day, and I may have been wrong on my comment, but uh, I 
overheard a person say something about the trucking. Uh, are we behind? And what are we behind on trucking? Not our fault, but right. I understand the trucking, the, the materials that's leaving the port is not meeting the schedules that we had in place. Yeah, there, we're probably maybe, it'd be fair to say, maybe according to what I expected, probably a week. But I, that's all just, I think it's actual the construction part uh, uh, up on the Marble River site has just been slow to get going. And those delays have just kind of trickled on down through the whole project so that um, it's more with the uh, trucking company. They're all ready and waiting to move this stuff out. But there's only so many things that uh, they can take up there and put on one site at a time. So from day to day, it might just slip a little bit so that they're not where they think they're going to be the next day. But so far, um, it, it's kind of leveled out to where the majority of stuff's going out now as expected. So maybe they'll pick that up. Um, I'm not sure uh, on that. But um, uh, <coughs> I would say, yeah, right now, probably where I expected. But by the same token, they did move the whole project at us about 10 days earlier oh, also. Just Kind of fill me in a little bit here. We we talked about a complete windmill going out every day. Correct. Monday okay. through Friday. Yeah. So that would have been that have been seven windmills a week. No, uh, five. They just go Monday through oh, Friday. Okay, five. Yep. And we're not meeting that. Um, we we are or they are now, but the first uh, probably two and a half weeks it was um, some days. It, normally you need eleven. Parts probably they were, we're only moving uh, five to six, and then some days it'd be seven, then some would just be three. So, if you were out of that two and a half weeks, you might only say you, you hit five days of, of complete windmill towers. Yeah. Okay. My last question is: that if we get bogged down here, have we got room to put all of this stuff with the ships that's coming in? Yes. Even if they don't move it. Yeah, right now we we've already, yeah we've already moved in total um, one whole vessel there and you know according to the plan that we've worked um, it's all working out pretty good like for example just a side note for the containers go out um, I don't they move three containers a day and we've already got 30 of them and that was space that actually we can use now because they okay. they've already moved out probably forty. I see you're filling that up as quick as it goes. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's um and, and one thing though there is some things that uh, the the Transera the, the companies there that's had to do that they've required more room and they're trying to keep that lane down through there as wide as possible. Mm -hmm. But you know it, it's going to come to a point where they're going to have to uh, choose the uh, storage over the, the regular activity. I can see on the construction end of it up there, and I can vision up there that they've only got X amount of cranes to per site. So that crane is in one site to unload it, and then it's there to put the to, to, to assemble it. So it's not ready to move. So when they get up there, they're going to wait to unload it. Right, right, exactly. So, so. Okay, exactly. because I guess it's going directly to every site. It, yes, and then uh, one issue came up, though. It's probably a good thing for them, but it was too windy to put up blades on a couple of days. So the blades kind of held them back a half a day, maybe, waiting for the wind to calm down. Well, my concern was that if we got room in the port, if we had yeah. to unload, unload all our ships, yeah. we have. Thank you. Yeah. That's all I wanted to hear. Anything else for Steve? Yeah. Steve, okay. the, the, the unloading of the ships, is that going as per, you know, yes. three yeah. four days okay. at a time? Yeah, the, 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 the tower ships require a little less time as opposed to the turbines. And when we did the... Uh, you know, our estimation of how the, the we, we kind of leveled it all out, but we, we realized that some of the tower ships may take three to four days, whereas the turbines uh, would go four, four and a half, five days. And uh, so far, so good, but that, sure. that all came about from past experience, and it, mm -hmm. I, I was kind of glad to see that it was kind of in that same, uh, and we picked up a few things um, over uh, the past that, that we've gotten a little better on. There's other things, too, that, um, we really had to double down on like uh, a lot of the cutting and lashing, especially on the turbine ships. That's uh, why they take you know, four to five mm -hmm. days. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Um, I'd just like to say that uh, 
Steve has, has done a great job of providing us with uh, us being accounting with complete and detailed information that's enabled us to uh, to do complete and timely billing, accurate billing. And uh, without the information that he's uh, provided us and the communication that he provided us, that would be impossible. Thank you. But I don't think the people will understand how this project evolves and who pays what and where the money goes and all the things that logistical. Mm -hmm. It's very yeah. complex. Very complex. Yeah. So yep. How you make deductions and dues and this, that, whatever. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Much appreciated, Steve. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Very old, Steve. Okay. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Thanks, Wade. What? What? What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I used to do, something. <laughs> I thought you were going to I'll wait till he gets in the door and say, hey, come here. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. What do you oh, got? I'll wait till he gets in the car. I thought you were going to ask about the underground fire hydrant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, you know what? I left my phone. I can't call him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Uh, Mr. Davis, you're up. Okay. Uh, I've been a, a busy month, as you can, as you can tell here. Uh, a couple of things I'd like to hit on down through here. We've uh, continued the advocacy efforts on the approach span rehabilitation project. Um, we're still waiting to hear on our federal highway uh, program, the inter innovative, uh, innovative Bridge uh, Grant. Um, we expect to hear in June 2012, which that will be exciting for us. Uh, we're one of three uh, uh, applications for the state of New York. So that's <coughs> uh, we're continuing to work with uh, MTO, that's Canadian DOT, uh, regarding improved signage on the uh, bridge, on the routes 401 and 416. Um, participated in a Beyond the Border conference call. That was the new um, Obama-approved uh, legislation that uh, is trying to increase border fluidity. And there were representatives from USDOT and Transport Canada on the call. Um, in October 2012, you'll see a very interesting documentary from the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. They were on site filming the bridge, and they were talking about economic links and shared economic ties between the communities of Prescott and Ogdensburg. So that should be a very interesting, uh, uh, very interesting outcome, and I'll make sure that uh, everybody receives the link on that when it does come out. Mm -hmm. We had the Labor Management uh, Committee uh, started to review the health insurance options that's required by the agreement. Uh, we've had the auditors here, the MWDE conference calls, uh, personnel committee meetings. Um, several interesting things at the port on the airport side of things. We had a meeting with the airport engineer regarding the master plan. Um, we've had uh, several discussions with regional media regarding uh, Canadians crossing the border to take advantage of flights out of Ogdensburg here. Um, several quotes during the period. The RFQs are back with requests for qualifications on the Proctor Avenue redevelopment. Uh, it's currently before the Facilities Committee. Uh, there are some extra copies of the CD if you would like them, as opposed to having the, the, the nine books there. That's on the redevelopment on the six and a half acre parcel. Rede uh, the <laughs> ranking will take place uh, sometime within the next two weeks with the facilities committee, and then we'll get the top two or three firms in here to uh, talk to the board. Um, we had a very positive meeting and a positive success regarding the port uh, dredging with the Army Corps of Engineers uh, in Buffalo. This was held in conjunction with the Port of Ogdenburg, Port of Oswego, all of our federal uh, elected representatives had represent, uh, representation at the table. Uh, that went a long way towards uh, getting everything uh, settled and approved. Now, as a direct result of this meeting, what happened is the Section 107 deepening study uh, for the Port of Ogdensburg was approved. Um, why is that important? That's important because the three-year time clock started which means the study will take two to three years to complete. After that, dredging or deepening of the harbor will occur two to three years after that. Uh, so our, we've made it through the second major gate of the uh, process. Um, had a lot of conversations with councils, uh, both internal and external, uh, regarding a number of uh, various items uh, for the authority. Um, as I mentioned previously, the port access road and the temporary port access road have uh, pl placed uh, significant demands on everyone's time. 
Um, a lot of checking in on the project with the ship company and also the logistics company involved, making sure that everything's running smoothly. Um, and uh, we've had several, I don't call them bumps in the road because that, that's not, it's not that serious, but we have had several meetings with uh, representatives of both the local and international offshore machine. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Is there another hurdle we have to go through on the dredging, or it's just a time situation now? Um, it's a, there's a cost hurdle. Uh, the cost hurdle is relatively straightforward. Uh, it's probably about a $400,000 cost for the study. 100000 is picked up by uh, um, the federal program, and the other is cost shared 50-50. Uh, uh, we've already got some of it in our capital budget this year, so we're in good shape there. Um, we need to find additional funding, so we'll look for additional sources there. Once that study gets uh, complete, the study itself takes about two years to start to finish, and then the report is issued, and then the recommendation is implemented at that point. So th that gives you a feel for the yeah. gates as we go through. Do we participate in the study, or do they do it their own independent way? They do it their own independent way, but we do participate in it. And what we get at the end of the day is a vote that's yeah. that So when the recommendations made, then there's still a chance, that, I mean, could they weigh less at all at that point? Or? They could. I mean, they could, um, again, the pace is at the, as determined by the Corps of Engineers. So mm -hmm. if they wanted to stretch out the study, uh, they could. Um, there's no set timeline. In other words, they don't have to finish it. Yeah. Uh, you know, 365 days from the day they started, for example. There's none of those hard things there. But, but we seem pretty needy, so. Yes. Okay. Thanks. And our justification for the deepening of, of the port did pass the cost-benefit ratio, and that was prior to everything that we have going on at the port this year. So we're in much better, even in much better shape uh, now than what we were at the time the preliminary study was completed. And that one thing, you, uh, Ramona, there's a lot of pressure on the Corps uh, for studies because of the whole East Coast and the w expanding the Panama Canal so bigger ships can come through. Everybody looking for dredging coming up the East Coast because they can't handle the big ships. So I'm sure there's a lot of pressure on those guys, the, the organization. So. And our, our federal folks have really gone to bat here for us. So that's good. And, uh, you know, we'd be remiss if we didn't thank uh, Senator uh, Kirsten Gillibrand also Senator Schumer's office and Congressman Owens. They've really come to that for us on this. That's great. Okay. Okay, to get with all the money. For <laughs> 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 what money you got? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Cash flow is an issue. We'll talk about that later. There's, there's, there's a reason we didn't buy dinner tonight. Did <laughs> <laughs> you say it's an issue? It's not existing. <laughs> right. That, that's all timing, of course. You know, when you're, with all that activity, we're paying a lot of bills and uh, we're doing a lot of invoicing, and the, uh, we're paying the bills sooner than we're getting the, we're getting the funds. But, uh, that'll all work itself out. Under compliance, um, the MWBE quarterly submission was complete through the fourth quarter, and uh, we constantly are looking for MWBE vendors, and I think Steve gets sick of me encouraging the use of these vendors, but I think it's important. That's what we're, that's what we're called upon to do, uh, and uh, we'll continue to look for those vendors. Uh, prepare the, uh, the account reconciliation book. I should have put books, but we do have three three-ring binders of account reconciliations and uh, other information in preparation for the audit. Uh, the auditors were here June 4th through the 7th gathering data and information uh, to complete the audit, and we've been providing them information again this week. Uh, Parish reporting is due June 30th, and uh, we are working on upgrade, up, up, updating grant administration files and procedures. Uh, I've been providing analysis uh, to John and uh, Steve on pro other projects. We are constantly looking for uh, you know, th this project's going to end. We want another one to follow it quickly, not, not have a long time between projects. Um, I provided the CPI data for the uh, future benefit calculation for <coughs> health insurance. Um, 
and we have and we've worked on the ILA dues worksheets and accounting that's been, uh, as you mentioned earlier, part of the complexity, along with the uh, invoice calculations. Uh, it's not as simple as one might think. Uh, you know, we do have some straightforward pricing, but then there's the additional charges for when it does go over the time that we've allocated for it in, in the contract. So it does make for some complex uh, calculations and so on. And we've only had a few instances where we've had questions uh, about the, we send them a draft invoice for them to look over, and uh, those have been going quite well. Um, continuing to look for operational efficiencies in the accounting and finance. Uh, We've started the use of the new biometric clock. Uh, I decided yesterday that we will continue both clocks for another pay period, um, just because of the, you know, uh, trying to make sure everybody's, we get, we get all the information we need. Um, have a summer intern that's uh, really been critically important to getting the information ready for the auditors, and, uh, and then I have facilitated her training in several areas so that uh, fill in on vacations and so on. And uh, participated in a lot of port access road updates. That's been, uh, as you all know, uh, a lot of a lot of things going on there. Uh, we do have the uh, work some more with the uh, independent <coughs> contractors on the audio and video equipment. I'll point out that the when you can see on that camera, and we are going to as soon as we get the uh, drop from uh, Time Warner, We'll have a, a uh, laptop in the back where you'll see the screen bigger than the screen up there on the <coughs> camera. But when, that, when there's a picture of this room on that camera, it's recording. And when that picture is gone, it's not recording. So uh, that'll be an easy guide to know whether or not the camera's on. I hope my bald spot doesn't shine and hurt. <laughs> <laughs> that was a concern. Yeah. They kind of tried to tilt it. So <laughs> I was a special filter on I'm at the other end, so we, <laughs> so we got a bald spot. Eventually, it's going to be a bigger screen. Yeah. It'll be a bigger screen, yeah. So, yes. Yeah. You'll be able to see it. Uh, be able to see it. Uh, so, now let's move to uh, page uh, four of seven here, which is the airport activity report. Um, Passenger numbers are uh, exceeding the numbers that were up almost 50% last year. Uh, remember those numbers last year, you can see them there in the middle column, uh, 546. That was up from two or 300 the year before. Now we're up into the 800s. I have the employment numbers down at the bottom for the first two months of our fiscal year. Uh, the employments have been 880. Uh, so continue strong uh, uh, passenger numbers at the airport. And I just didn't get around to get the fuel sales gallons. Are we here to 10,000? No. No, because it's only employments. So um, yeah, we'll be now. halfway there, I think. Yeah, it sounds like half. Yeah. 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 yeah, a little bit. No. Up at the top there, heading here, I think it's yes. this meeting here, 2013, okay. 2012. It's the year ending. Yeah, but we haven't got to this is April of the year ending March yeah. 2013. So I, I can change that to yeah. where it's uh, where it says yeah, we're instead of year ending, year. I'll put I'll put uh, fiscal that, year. That's our fiscal year. Our fiscal year oh, ends okay, uh, 3/31/2013. I can change that okay. to fiscal year 2012. That's okay. I just 12, okay. That would have more meaning in March <laughs> of 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the next page is the uh, bridge traffic report, and, and again, the, the auto crossings are, are continue to grow, um, up 10.7 percent in May. Uh, for the year, all total crossings are up six and a half percent, and that is coming off a very strong year. Uh, so, seeing this kind of growth continuing is very encouraging. I was asking Wade the other day when I was down here on the. And it just seemed to me that it was, I said, what's going on? I looked, and about, all of a sudden, there's about 20 cars coming through the toll booth. One, boom, 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 boom. And I said, what, what is going on? And I guess 
uh, you can explain that to the maybe yeah members. what they're doing uh, occasionally at the uh, border station is they're doing batch scanning what they'll do is they'll have pull over about 20 cars as, as what you saw out there in the parking lot and they'll have the drivers get out and wait up by the building and then they'll have the truck the mobile unit and go around the cars and sweep the cars and then let everybody back in and then they'll wind up at the total unit. That's Why? relatively new. Then they all come out all at once yeah, and they yeah. hit the tow boat. Yeah. And they're all hitting there. Boy, I'll tell you, I'm glad that Steve took our bridge pass away. Because that probably would have got my wife. Over to her, she go over to that duty free store. <laughs> <laughs> How far are we away from the. Uh, <laughs> 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 so dead. We're looking at passes like we have on the way and whatever for the toll booth. We need to get a request for proposal together uh, for the uh, toll booth replacement. We have not done that yet. Because that certainly would alleviate that. Uh, the automatic. That would give us some more options. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, when, I, when we were in Florida, I tell Fred about what I'm charging them for your calls to Florida. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> the, actually, when you get a rental car, and for I think it was like two dollars or something a day, they'll put it on your credit card so you can use the toll lanes without having to have one of those little things in your mm -hmm. yeah, so, which is pretty handy yeah, yeah. when you're renting, so you don't have to stand in line all the time. So yeah. it's like two fifty a day. Yeah, I made a brilliant decision. They give me thirty-five dollars for unlimited. Yeah, I made a brilliant decision not to use it. I used my son's transponder to cost me seventy-five dollars for two misses. <laughs> <laughs> they take the photographs. Yeah. And they know where all those records <coughs> are. You know what you're going to do the next time. That was in uh, Orlando, and then when I tried to rectify it, I was talking to a lady in Oklahoma. I know nothing about Orlando. It's a defective dollar. It's a full business. That whole thing's being played. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, I think that's something that we would help us with. It's on our list. Thank you, sir. It's cheap. So, any questions about any? Or the only question I have, Fred, is uh, a little bit about it is with all these bills going out and everything coming back and everything else, are we pretty comfortable with our cash flow? Are we are we cushioned there? Or I, I wouldn't say comfortable, but uh, we're managing. We're managing it quite well. Uh, but do we have a place, say, for instance, that we don't get paid? Do we have a place? We can get some money to...